Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney. I do elder law. I live in faraway Marlboro. Married a woman from Hudson, though. <laughs> um, and we're, I'm at Mariko Connell now. There are 70 of us, 40 in, uh, in Worcester and 20 in Westboro, where I work, and uh, 10 in Boston. Um, because there are so many of us, I get to do nothing but elder law, which is what I really like doing. But this show, of course, has nothing to do with elder law. If you haven't watched it before, you'll know, you'd know that. This has to do with my friends Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And, and Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if you live in Hudson, that means you want to stay in Hudson. You don't even want to go to Marlboro. Um, and so the question is, who are the people you need to know and what are the programs you need to know about uh, in order to just be able to stay in Hudson? So it's almost... It is the holidays. It is the holidays. Uh, and so with me is my good friend Jackie Kapopoulos, who many of you know because she's been here just forever. Have you literally just been here forever? <laughs> I haven't been here forever. I've been, I've been doing it for about seven or eight months. Yeah, but I mean, you haven't been in the show forever, but you were in Hudson forever. We I mean, moved to Hudson time. 51 years ago. Oh, not just quite Just about now. <laughs> just about the time you were born. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's really. Great. That's great. So Jackie and I do co-host the show because... I figure Jackie really knows a lot more of the people here in Hudson, um, and so that's why we've had a number of just great guests over the year, and, mm -hmm. and it has been. It's been eight months now that we've been doing it together. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's true. But yeah. today I brought a guest. I brought my friend Doug Peck. Now, Doug um, runs an organization called Seniors Helping Seniors, um, which he can describe, but, but in general, one of the things I really like about Seniors Helping Seniors is that all of his employees are seniors, as well as all of the people that he helps. So I asked Doug to come over and, and, and tell a little bit about the organization, but then I also wanted to use that to just have us just talk a little bit about the holidays mm -hmm. and about being a senior in the, during the holidays, mm -hmm. whether you are married or single or healthy or sick or whatever. And, and, from, and I think especially, you know, maybe from our personal experiences, we can throw in any, right? Mm -hmm. But from your experience mm -hmm. kind of professionally dealing with a variety of families, how you deal with all that stuff. So first of all, just give people a sense again about what Seniors Helping Seniors is, which astonished me when I first heard it. Yeah, we, <clears throat> excuse me, we are an in-home agency. We don't do any medical care or personal care, yeah. but yeah. we do a variety of other things to make sure that people need, that can stay in the home that want to stay in their home. Yeah. And quite honestly, most people, as we age now, our healthcare system is so good, they don't need constant nurse attention. They don't need to have a doctor there. They don't need to have that kind of attention, but they need them to do other things. They need them to do the laundry because they shouldn't be going downstairs and most laundries in a lot of homes are in the right basement. Downstairs. Certainly most you know? of the people that we know, right? <clears throat> right. In our age group, mm -hmm. that's where it was. It was always, because it was always kind of an In afterthought. the basement, right. right. And if, they, if they're on a walker, it's very hard to do things like make the beds or take down curtains and clean them because you just can't balance like that. And so many people are living alone. A spouse has passed away. So oftentimes the other spouse is not driving as much, if at all, and they don't want to cook. They don't want to cook meals for themselves. Mm -hmm. So they become a little isolated. So our goal is really to sort of fight that isolation. And because all of our um, employees, and they are paid employees, are seniors, um, they sort of know what they're going through because oftentimes they've taken care of a relative themselves more than one sometimes, either a spouse or an uncle or an aunt. So they really know what to do and, and anticipate it. And they're not on their smartphones all day long. Mm -hmm. And they can sit and talk with them and, and relate to them with, with very similar experiences. So it really is uh, a remarkably good program. And it's just a, it's one of those simple ideas that just works. That works mm -hmm. well. That works. And, and before we talk about the, <clears throat> the holidays, I just wanted you to give that, that one example you gave of, of, of a woman, you know, a, mm -hmm. a, 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 a widowed woman mm -hmm. who is living with her kids. Yes. In what sounds like <clears throat> the ideal situation. Right. But she still had some issues. Can you just talk it, about it? Was one of, it was one of my first clients. It was uh, a fairly close neighbor of mine. I live in Southboro. Uh, and her husband had passed away about a year ago. And they were living in one of the bigger homes in Southboro yeah. with... Uh, uh, her son, who was uh, an, an executive, and her daughter-in-law, who was also an executive, and uh, two teenage boys. Uh, and it was just a busy 
you can imagine a busy, chaotic house. People are going to work at seven and not coming back till eight. The kids had a million things to do. And here she was, you know, in the home uh, and really began to feeling fairly isolated because everything was happening around her. Around her. That's the kind of You know, and, and it's just the craziness that goes around. She's sitting there, you know, sometimes a little stunned to see what's going on. I mean, right. she also lived nearby, so she was very familiar with them but it's not like living mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we were asked to come in uh, because she was really alone during the day for the most part, and just to take her out for some walks, uh, you know, prepare, prepare a simple lunch for her and just keep her, you know, just keep her company for a few hours. Um, I had, uh, because it was five days a week, I had two people going over for like three hours each, each day. And it turns out, and this was a, a revelation to me, uh, both the people I had brought over, my employees, they were also from Southboro. Right? One was from Ashland, one was from Southboro. They were widows themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, my client, what it turns out is, they, she had never been able to really talk to anyone about being widowed. Mm -hmm. She couldn't talk to her son. No one, you know, she wasn't certainly going to talk to her daughter-in-law about it. So she began talking to these other two women about what their, what they went through, their grieving process. One went to a bereavement group uh, because her husband had gone through hospice. So they were able to really give her a lot of, uh, a lot of comfort. Mm -hmm. And and uh, she had been on uh, antidepressants because she was depressed. And within about two months, they had cut those antidepressants in half because she had somebody there to talk to, somebody there to make an emotional connection with. And really, that's the bottom line with sort of the loneliness that we talk about is the lack of an emotional connection. I mean, you have it with the family to an extent, but this is really becomes just more intimate. Mm -hmm. right. And people never lose that, the need to be to have that kind of intimate, to have like a friend who you could really talk to about things that are bothering you or, you, or they're just there that you need to talk about. Mm -hmm. And that's what our folks are really, really good at doing. So earlier today, D Doug and I were doing this, <clears throat> this um, <clears throat> seminar presentation in Sudbury. We were talking, and, and it was one of the people that we mm -hmm. had, we've had, the geriatric care manager, was, and they were talking about these kind of last year of your life issues, as we talked about one of our, mm -hmm. right, because mm -hmm. of your experiences, you know, in, in, as a nurse, mm -hmm. right? Um, but there was a line that you used mm -hmm. that you had just heard, which I, I hadn't heard before, which was, the line was... It's a great line. People are medicine for people. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. really, really true. And it's really, really true for, for seniors and elders. Because there's, you know, you can give them all kinds of antidepressants or you can do anything else. But the real medicine is people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, even when I started this business, I started, well, after uh, what was an initiation for me was my mother, my father passed away, my mother wanted to stay in the house she was at for 40 some odd yeah, so years. she gave you the test. And so was the test. <laughs> and I would go over and she'd have a list to do and I'd run and do all the stuff and I'd come back to the house and you know, my, my wife, she was the smart one, she said, you know, so what did you do? I did all this. She says, you know, uh, you can get people to do all this other stuff for you, but she, what she really wants is for you to sit and have a cup of tea mm -hmm. and find out how her day went. Because mm -hmm. you can't pay somebody Because to you your can't son. pay someone right. to do, you, you can now with us, but right. that's the real point is that that's what she was really looking for and she missed because she had one neighbor left in the neighborhood and they didn't get out to see each other very often. And when bad weather came, n none of them could get out because they were afraid to walk down, a, mm -hmm. down an icy driveway right. because they all know a fall was going to put them, you know, in the hospital or long-term care. So that was really the, the kicker for me was to understand that they, it's w just what they want is that it, just, just kind of want. just to sit there and be acknowledged and listened to. Mm -hmm. you know. And the advantage for our people going in is that the family doesn't have to hear the story for the 50th or 60th <laughs> time. It's all new to it's somebody all else. New. It's all new for the person to tell it. You know, So they can relive things because, again, a lot of the folks that we deal with have some type of short-term memory issues. Well, the short-term memory issues is what happened in the last few days or weeks mm -hmm. or years. So they certainly remember where they were when 
on Pearl Harbor Day, they remember all this stuff, and so right. do my folks. You right. know, so they have a lot to be able to relate to and talk to. So there's a lot more in common. There's a lot more in common. Now, I'm curious, Jackie, you spent a lot of time at the Senior Center. You've been really active there for quite a while. Mm -hmm. are, are there many people, when Doug describes all of that, do you find, are there many people there who, that's one of the reasons they're really going to the Senior Center, is just to kind of get out and to have a circle? Oh, and so, uh, certainly. It's a socialization. Um, very few people who go to the Senior Center um, volunteer. They mm. go there to have coffee. They go yeah. there to play cards. They go to the, uh, we got some who play pool. We got a quilting class. There are a lot of activities mm -hmm. that people go to the Senior Center yeah. for. We have a small group who come in and just sit and have coffee and just kind of enjoy the mm -hmm. ambience of being around other people. They might not talk much or contribute much, but they're there. Mm -hmm. You know, and, um, and I think that's a good point. So you can you, you can be there as a talkative person, which right, some people right, tend to be, you right. know, or or as a shy person right. like me, a person that just kind of, you know, <laughs> because but you just feel more comfortable. Absolutely, just being, just being mean, in the presence of some of those folks. You know, Christmas is coming. The senior center is always a good place to go around the holidays. I know that there's going to be. Um, a, a, a small Christmas luncheon mm -hmm. um, closer to the holidays before the senior center closes um, yep. for Christmas. Which people would call Which, and get the date and the time uh, and all uh, that uh, jazz. Well, it's, it's right in the calendar or they could call That's the correct. senior center and find out what time they could call, ask for the um, bus to go and pick them up if they'd like mm -hmm. to come and then oh. the bus would take them back home again. Um, we also have a very, very popular group on Fridays, and people bring their lunch for this. It's called um, uh, uh, Jazz, mm -hmm. Jazz Group, you know, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of senior citizens who play an instrument, and they all get together and play music, and so, sometimes, and so they there's, kinda a, there's, sometimes there's a sing-along, yeah. but they bring their lunches. It's very informal. Nothing is formal at the mm -hmm. senior center. Right. Everything is, is very informal. Um, and, but that's the point, because it's, it's kind of really designed so that people can just show up. Right. Yep. right. You know, you don't have to just figure, oh, God, I'm not part of that group, and so that I really, Absolutely. And so, and so I really can't come. Absolutely. There's a nice little library there. Um, but you make a good point. I think what we, should, we should probably ask the folks here to, to put that information, just that call information and stuff when, when they're running this show, because especially during the holidays, mm -hmm. if people haven't had a chance to go down and they're feeling like, well, you know, this wouldn't be a bad time, you know, especially if they're feeling at home and they're kind of mm -hmm. down in the dumps, mm -hmm. right? Because the place is there, right? Mm -hmm. And and I, you know, I'll tell you, I go to, so I go quite, I go to quite a few senior centers, right? Because I, I do this stuff in about, two, oh, probably twelve towns, and I don't think there's any place, any place that is more welcoming than that senior, senior center. center. Mm -hmm. And it's also really well designed that way. You know, mm -hmm. it isn't kind of cavern. Some of the places you go mm -hmm. in, it's really cavernous No, it's very and homey yeah. feeling. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the folks are always there. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons why I had, I had, I had asked Doug to come down is to, to talk about issues that sometimes that make be coming up, which are, I want to say, unique to the holidays, mm -hmm. right? But, re but that really <clears> come up <throat> in the holidays, right? Because we've got this stretch of time. Mm -hmm. it's, an, it's, it's, it's always an unusual family time, mm -hmm. right? It's always different. Sometimes unusual in a good way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes unusual in a really bad way, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's always, but, but from, from your, ex I would bet that from your experience, you've seen some of these issues playing out, right? And, and I'd just like you to talk about that, and especially about issues that may be unique to situation where some a situation where somebody really does has had a recent loss mm -hmm. or has physical issues or perhaps has some memory issues mm -hmm. because the, 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 these are the issues that we're you know we're we're all facing mm -hmm. right yeah particularly when families are scattered and they're coming back to see a parent or parents right. that they haven't seen for maybe 6 months or longer right so generally Which is not uncommon it's now, not right? uncommon nowadays at all i mean sometimes they only get the visit at uh, at Christmas oh, nice. because they're going to visit the other set of parents mm -hmm. who are also mm -hmm. elderly right. and may live in an, a, another, another different time. state. And so they're blowing you know, in. So they're coming in very quickly. Right. And it's... Um, and, and it's, by the way, I'm very... So I got one in D.C., mm -hmm. I got one in Austin, Texas, I got one in Colorado right. Springs. So no one just drops by right. to say hello. Right. So, you, so, the, <clears throat> and so there is this whole anticipation around mm -hmm. the holidays where right. people come home. And 
you know, a lot of times they're, you know, they're on a they're on a high speed course to get everything done. They're going to see some other friends while they're there, and you know, they have they have a lot planned. And to come into a, a house that's been very quiet for six months or so with kids, maybe a dog, and you know, and the people is just you have to stop and think how really disrupt that, disruptive that is to the person. And they become very, very anxious about what's going to happen. And when, when they're like that, they're just not enjoying the visit. You know, the best thing is to do is to think about it, what, what you want to accomplish. But when you're at the house, go slow. Really slow things down, because if you've been with seniors for a long time, you know that they're not in the pace of the normal world. If they're not out there on a regular basis, things are moving a lot slower for them. You need to adapt to them. They are not going to adapt to you. So if you have grandkids, my advice is have just one of them go sit. If it's, if it's a single parent, you know, if it's a single grandparent, yeah, yeah. go sit with them for a little while, just the two of them, and get a chance to talk and make a connection. Because what happens when everybody's there, there's no connection being made. You know, you're sitting around the table with seven or eight people. You, you know, the, your parent might be at the head, but there's all this buzz going on around you that, again, it's a whirlwind to you. So you need to take it slow, you know? It's also a good time. Well, that's, a, that's a really interesting yeah. point. Because I, I know we have, we have a good friend from Hudson, actually. Now she lives in um, Westboro. Mm -hmm. And, well, she will be taking her in February for her 99th birthday. Oh, right? wow. Mm -hmm. but, but I remember a few years ago, we had a, kind of an event for her, right? And so at the Wayside Inn, and, mm -hmm. and so there were maybe 30 people. But, of course, she didn't talk to any of them. No. Mm -hmm. Not a single person because everybody was just you know, kind of stopping in to say hello, mm -hmm. and then, of course, going to talk to other folks that were there. This notion of actually thinking, if your family's coming in, you're gonna to try to consciously have each person really sit down and talk mm -hmm. to them. Yeah. That's really interesting, yeah. And my advice is, don't go to a restaurant, because it's just too noisy, and the exact same thing is going to happen. If your parent is at an assisted living facility, uh, either with a memory unit or without, all of them have small dining rooms that you can use. Go there. So there's only seven or eight of you, and just take it slow. They're not going to eat a lot. The, you know, the, the whole idea of a, of a four- or five-course meal with all this stuff, forget about it. Simplify it for them mm -hmm. because you, you really have to look at, say, what, would, what do they want? What, what's going to really make them happy, not you? And it's hard because you have all these traditions and you still think, well, I want to do this because mom always liked these traditions, but now mom doesn't really care about them anymore. You know, uh, it's a good time to make some new traditions. That's, it's, uh, that's also an interesting thing when you think about our kids because we, they're always going to, especially the ones that are away, mm -hmm. it's like, so they, they're always going to think of us the way that we were before they left. Right. Mm -hmm. And they show up and they kind of almost want us to be that, right? Yep. That's, now, are, you, are yours, do, yours, do you have kids that live close? Do you have kids that live close? I have four who live close and um, one who's out of state. So for our traditional, and I'm still up for it, yeah. we all go to mass together yeah. um, Christmas Eve, and then we come back to our place and um, order out Chinese food, and mm -hmm. open up gifts and spend some time. It's chaotic, but mm -hmm. it's you know it's fine. Yeah. Um, when my mother was with us, um, I did something different. She was there for a while, right? Um, she wasn't. I, she never lived with me. She lived at New Horizons. Yeah. yeah. But she would. Um, I would have Christmas Day over at our cafe, which was bigger. Mm -hmm. And our cafe. That was the. Over in, in the Esplanade. Right at the Esplanade, yeah. Right at the Esplanade, yep. where there was an elevator mm -hmm. and access. And she was up for this. She liked this. Mm -hmm. And we, we would have extended family come, people that she hadn't seen for the year. My mother didn't have any um, um, memory problems. I mean, she was mm -hmm. really quite alert and, and with yep. it, so I didn't have to deal with that. But um, certainly, you know, I changed my traditions very frequently as as the years went on due mm -hmm. to my sister's health, my 
mother's health, my brother's health, mm -hmm. you know, so we, we I kind of adapted. Mm -hmm. And now we do this, and when I get tired of it, I'll say, I'm tired of doing it. <laughs> well, that's great. I say, yeah. You have it at your house, and we'll come, and then we'll leave. Exactly you know? right. Yeah. Well, exactly right. I mean, yes. and I feel, I mean, I feel so free with my children to do that. And one, that's great, because everybody's comfortable around the room. Right. Uh, one, one thing, point I'd like to make, just addressing, um, I think people have a lot of you know, they have memories of what Christmas used to be mm -hmm. like. And now there are so many people who are part of those Christmases who are gone now. Right. There are, um, there are people who have just lost loved ones around the holiday, mm -hmm. you know, um, and they just aren't into the holiday spirit or getting out. And I say there's no wrong way to cope, mm -hmm. you know. Um, if you um, want to stay in, mm -hmm. fix yourself a nice meal, watch a movie that you like, it's only one day, and if you feel like you don't want to spend it with a whole bunch of people because you need to move past your own grief or whatever it right. is, give yourself permission to do that. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people feel like, well, I shouldn't let the family down on, and right. you know. Or I have to, sh to stiff up a lip. Yeah, you know, yeah, to yeah. This you, out, know, you know, and, um, and what's I mean, the point? What's the point? The thing is that family members can go over and stop in for very brief periods of time, but respect that need to just have that space. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Mm -hmm. Um, Which really kind of goes back to something you would just It does, yeah, I think, yeah. I think that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Consciously is. trying to modify it as opposed to simply trying to relive yet last year's mm -hmm. holiday. Right. right? I, I, think that, I think that a good thing to ask the senior in your life is, you know, if you have a mother like mm -hmm. I did, yeah. what would you like to do this year, mm -hmm. you know? Do you want to see all the same people? Do you want to just go out and have a quiet dinner? Right. Do you, uh, you what would you like to do? Yeah. And um, let them. Well, they should be involved in, yep. in the yep. preparation yep. in, in everything and in yep. deciding. I think that's a big part of it because I think you're right. That's another part that I was going to talk about is that they feel left out. Everything is being done around them right. and they don't feel like they're really part of it. Because they, they're used to contributing. They're used to making yep. the dinner, making cookies, doing you, all the stuff that a lot of them can't do did, anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You did it you know, all so before. Yeah. Right. So yeah. now, if you just say, what would you like? Uh -huh. And I think it's so important, uh, particularly if there are folks coming in out of town that haven't mm -hmm. seen for a while, is to ask questions like that, but also spend the time to say, so what's changed? Mm -hmm. You know, how are you feeling? What mm -hmm. are you doing? Look around the house. Mm -hmm. Is there leftover food in the refrigerator that shouldn't be there? You know, uh, are there... Uh, is her medication up up to date? You mm -hmm. know, I mean, if you find a pill bottle that she should be taking that's still full of pills, and the date on it is three months old, something's mm. going on. Yeah. Right. yeah, you know. So I mean, there's a chance for you to look around a little bit, but you have to be sensitive to that, and you have to, again, slow the pace down a little bit and, and spend some time with mm -hmm. them to find out what's happening. Now, mm -hmm. can you just talk a little bit about because I know. It's, M many of your clients mm -hmm. are, are folks who've got some memory issues, mm -hmm. right? And the families of folks who've got some memory issues. Can you just kind of just talk a, a little bit about that, about about aspects of the this which which could be you know, unique to folks who have got memory <coughs> issues in terms of what all of these it's, things. Yeah, and when when a when a family member has a memory issue, it really does affect the whole family mm -hmm. because depending on where they are, the family. You know, uh, if, if they haven't seen them for six months, generally they have declined from what they've seen. Even if they've talked to them on the phone, well, 10 minutes on the phone once a week, you, uh, you know, most people with some form of dementia can fool anybody. You yeah. know, it's spending a whole day with them where you really get to see what their reality is. And that's the key. It's their reality, and it's going to be different than yours. And... You really can't argue with them. You really can't say, no, mom, you can't wear that out because, you know, it's winter now and, you, you know, you don't want to wear those shoes or that dress. You need to wear a coat. It's their reality. So uh, you've got to learn to step into that and accept where they are. And that's what puts a lot of stress on the, uh, on the family to really understand, okay, she, you know, he or she is declining 
and you know we now have to be thinking about what are our next strategies. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, if that's the case, if they're in an assisted living facility, you're going to speak to someone there about how's mom doing, what's mm -hmm. going on, what what are some of the issues, what are the issues you're having with her. If not, it might be somebody. Uh, like one of our employees that can give feedback because they spend a lot of time with her. You know, she is doing this and she's doing that, but she's not doing this anymore. So you really need to understand that. And, uh, um, and again, take it slow. What overwhelms people with dementia is bright lights, <laughs> which are, you know, you have flashing Christmas lights and everything mm -hmm. now. Right. A lot of noise because they're just again, not the used to that. Experience, which the always, whole restaurant experience. Because we'll, you're always tempted to do that. You say, well, we don't have to set up anything, blah, blah, blah. We'll just go to a restaurant. But it, as opposed to something simple right. at home. Simple at home because it can really frighten them because they just are not necessarily going to understand what's going on. I like the idea of and Chinese And some will see it as a threat. <laughs> a, as a threat. Yeah, bring <laughs> it in. Yeah. You know, bring it in, load up, you know, and then and just sit the way, around. Like and all restaurants do takeout now. I right. Mean, I, I bet all the restaurants in downtown Marlboro now. Absolutely. You know, from the best, you know, the biggest yeah. to the smallest, yeah. everybody's got takeout. Yeah. You so you can really bring the meal home without going, risking that kind of, all that. Mm-hmm. And don't push anything on her. If she right. used to like mushi pork and she won't eat it now, that's that's good. fine. That's all good. You know, that's right. That's that, that, limit the alcohol for that meal, mm -hmm. so nobody is going to get a little out of hand. Right. Not her, not the person necessarily, right. Right. but it could be somebody right. who's going to get a little out of hand. Limit right. that at least for that meal, so you can you know, so you can spend some t quality time together mm -hmm. and uh, enjoy each and other. enjoy the holiday. Right. Well, Jackie, as usual, thank you very much for doing this with me. You're and welcome. thank you very much for doing this this year. I know this, I remember originally Jackie was like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. You know, I'm kind of shy about it. I am not shy. Well, I am, but I, I am committed. Said, but yeah. you are committed. <laughs> and, and Doug, thank you. I think, I think the work that you do, the wonderful. work that you're just wonderful. Yep. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So those are some tips for the holidays. Uh, maybe they're relevant to you. I'm also going to mention, Doug is, they're always actually looking to hire more mm -hmm. seniors. That could be you. So if you are younger, right? No, I want to say younger. Your oldest senior that you works for you is how old? 90. 90. <laughs> wow. Younger than- The part-time, so. Younger yeah. than 100, maybe. You know, that in, 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 and you think that this would be something you really like to do and as, a, right. as a thing that just is, they don't pay a ton, but they pay well, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it could be a really good thing. So thank you very much for watching. Happy holidays to all of you. Thank yes. you, Merry Doug. Christmas. Happy yeah. New Year. Happy yes. New Year. Yeah. Happy Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Yeah. Enjoy the holidays. We'll see you next year. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Bye.